rap 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 oh hey you want to make something cool in my last video i built my crew kill team in this video i'm gonna convert them Now my idea was to create something very Turnip 28 style, which I've never done before, but I thought this was the perfect project for. Maybe these crout were eating some type of poisonous plant or infected mushroom, and instead of killing them, it started to grow and morph inside their body and protrude out of their skin. So I want to create something that's both plant and pustule, kind of like a mix between Nurgle and Selvanet. And as a weird side tangent, I pulled this carrot monstrosity out of my garden recently and decided to post it on threads with the caption, what is this wrong answers only? And I got some really funny replies, but this one was relevant because little did useless wizard know that was in the works. I've not done a lot of conversions before, but I'm ambitious. And I've talked to my friend Taryn, aka Conjured Craft, who is a huge fan of Turnip28 and got some advice. They gave me some tips and suggested I try a 50-50 mixture of green stuff and milliput. I bought some milliput a long time ago, but I've never used it. I figured now would be a good time to try it. At this point, you might notice my milliput looks a little funky. That didn't register to me at the time, but as you will find out, it does later on. I grabbed more than I thought I would need, figuring the extra I could just play around with and make some basing stuff. But I didn't factor in that I'm going to be using two types of putty, and I needed much less than I thought, like a comical amount of less. I started with the Crute Hound and began making little vines coming out of his back and head. Then made some spots that looked like coral or black morel mushrooms. Before I continue on, I'm going to put up this warning just to be safe. From there on, for the rest of the models, I made some more mushrooms and little holes, creating some for the bases as well, which could be used for pockets to fill with pus or goo later on. As I was working on the heavy gunner, turning his weapon into some type of spore gun, I noticed the putty was starting to dry up a lot faster than I thought it would. It was a hot day and I had my fan on blast, which didn't help. So I figured I would start mass producing a bunch of little vines and mushrooms that I could attach later on in one go instead of sculpting on each model one by one. But that didn't last long either. I was about 30 minutes or so into sculpting when the putty mixture was just no longer usable. I knew I did something wrong. This was the point where I inspected my milliput and realized that one stick was supposed to be gray, not brown. It was a bit old and crusty, and while still usable, I definitely believe the combination of adding it to a faster drying putty, such as the green stuff, decreased the drying time. I was so mad at myself for wasting time and putty, so I got up and I walked away. I took a break and decided to come back later to try again. I looked at all the models so far, trying to decide what else needed to be done. I mixed up some more green stuff, but this time by itself, just to finish off the models. Adding a few mushrooms and gross bits here and there. For the bases, I used some earth texture paint, then added a few pieces of dried up reindeer moss and pressed it into the texture paint to have it dry in place. For a final touch, I decided to add some fine basing texture to a few areas for a gritty feel, on the weapons and fabric for some more weathering. 
I didn't want them to be too heavily infected, but more in the beginning stages of changing. I was pretty happy with how they came out, especially the croup puppies. Now for what I think is one of the most satisfying parts. The priming stage, where it all becomes one cohesive model. I'm using Monument's Black Primer, which I'm thinning down slightly with some Flow Improver. This is because I'm using a smaller needle than you should for priming, so I don't want any clogs, but it'll still get the job done. Then I'm going to Zenithal Highlight with some white ink that I've also thinned down slightly. I am so excited to put paint on these guys, but unfortunately I have other projects to work on and they're just going to have to wait for now. I will definitely be going with a traditional turn of 28 color palette though. I haven't decided yet if I want to make a video dedicated to that painting process. Let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. As always, I love you face. Be excellent to yourself and to others. Hit that like and subscribe button and well, happy painting.